In this talk, we as members of Stanford Scholar Initiative will explore machine learning algorithms for online boosting of weak online learning algorithms. This is done by proposing slash designing optimal as well as adaptive algorithms that can handle weak learning algorithms according to their learnability by making them strong. Online boosting has been highly susceptible the limitation of the proposed algorithms is that they give better performance with larger datasets. This can create hindrance of its applicability in a generalized way. For instance, in the health sector, there is not much data to analyze as compared to the e-commerce domain. The primary research questions being asked are, boosting is well studied in the batch setting, but can it be made feasible when the amount of data is huge? Another natural question is, how can boosting be extended to the online setting? In the data stream model, the nature of high-speed data changes rapidly. Algorithms must handle such changes quickly and process them under very strict constraints of space and time. In data stream mining, the interest is centered in three main dimensions. Accuracy, amount of space or computer memory necessary, and the time required to learn from training examples and to predict. The authors go on to discuss two main methods, namely online boost by majority, which is adapted from the boost by majority approach for batch learning, and online adaptive learning, which is adapted from the Ada boost algorithm. Before moving on to the intricacies of these techniques, we look at some of the real world applications of these approaches. Popular uses include label ranking in accordance with relevance, Google Gmail labeling, email spam detection, and real world object detection. Face detection and image recognition procedures are a few other use cases that could benefit from the application of these algorithms in terms of speed of execution. Let's start with the most basic methodology. Here we can see an outline of online classification by boosting. Based on the example, the learner makes a prediction on the label and it suffers a certain loss due to an error in the classification of the example with the corresponding label sample. In this classification task, the two boosting algorithms, batch boosting and online boosting, are rivals to each other and remain on the opposite spectrum of working. Here we can see the differences between the two schemes, starting with their development in parallel. Now we introduce online boosting. At this point, we can imagine a black box called booster, which enters the data x1. The booster sends this data to the n weak learners, obtaining as many predictions as y hat. And it returns a prediction y1 hat. These predictions are weighted inside the booster, and since booster is a black box, we're not going to specify how. And then, with the input of the data y1 of the pair x1, y1, n updates the weak learners, each with a certain probability. This process, shown for t equals 1, is repeated for the t moments of the time horizon. Now for the third methodology. To solve an online learning problem, it is natural to consider game-theoretically optimal algorithms which find the best solution even in worst-case scenarios. This is possible for some special cases, but very difficult in general. On the other hand, many other efficient algorithms with optimal regret rate, but not exactly minimax optimal, have been proposed for different learning settings, such as the exponential weights algorithm. Through the use of drifting games, we can jump from the batch setting to online setting. The authors use this unified framework focused on the use of a potential-based family. Let's connect the definition of the potential family with our well-known online boosting scheme. In the formula of the mistake bound in a strong online learner, we see that the term to be minimized is the norm of maximum length of the vector of weights for each time instant. Of the two proposed solutions, one does not work and the other has problems. In the dilemma of whether or not to weigh weak learners evenly, batch boosting finds a combination of weak learners to minimize some loss function using coordinate descent. This solution allows the generalization of the batch boosting to the online setting, obtaining with it the algorithm Ada Boost. These are the basic building blocks for experiments, extinguishing the Valpal Wabbit open source machine learning to evaluate the algorithms used in the paper. The first block corresponds to the algorithms, as we can see in the picture. 
And the second block corresponds to the data coming from public sources like the UCI repository, the KDD Cup Challenges, and the HCRC Map Task Corpus. Performance is expressed as a function of loss. The lowest loss obtained for each data set is bolded, and this is the baseline loss obtained by running the weak learner, VW, on the data. On an already strong basis, online BBM had the best performance. Recapitulating our research questions, we look at the key areas the paper contributes to and the factors underlying the BBM and the AdaBoost algorithm, specifically adaptivity and loss minimization. With this, we arrive at the end of our talk about optimal and adaptive algorithms for online boosting. If you would like to know more about our talks, please visit scholar.stanford.edu. Thank you.